the sole reason you will see me wearing a long sleeve t-shirt in August is because this design is amazing. I do want to note that for all of these, I will be covering the Funimation dubs uh, because that's what I grew up with and those are my favorite with the soundtracks. Bruce Falconer is amazing. As the second DBZ movie, this one is not bad like some say. I just don't really get that. It feels a little stretched out and overlong at times. It is longer than most at 59 minutes, but it's because there's not enough story to fill that time. So I don't know why this one got the longer run time compared to some of the other ones. Points for making Krillin accidentally hilarious but I wish they wouldn't rely on that so much for him. He just becomes a gag and not a serious character anymore when he's actually a really respected martial artist who's one of the strongest Earthlings. The 1950s-esque mad scientist sounding music and theme is really unique. Goku is an absolute boss here as a friend and dad, and it's pretty exciting with the stakes. The villain could have been more interesting. He's different for sure, but also really cliche overall in terms of plans. There's lots of cliches here. There's fun fights, great animation, same problems with some of the more adult humor and tropes, which is kind of sad to see in one of the DBZ theme projects, and Gohan is still adorable. Now for the world's strongest, as far as canon goes, it really can't fit. Piccolo should be dead on Namek, as should everybody else. This is partially based on the fact that Gohan still has long hair. I like to think that Goku had this movie as a dream in his recovery in the hospital after fighting Vegeta, trying to make sense of his desire to get stronger and others attempting to conquer and hurt his friends and his planet. It could also be seen as a dream from Gohan, either some, sometime in the Namek saga or maybe when he's training with Piccolo. That one gets a little messier, but either way it works. Maybe they're having leaks in their dreams into other realities. We know officially it's another dimension because of the Xenoverse video games, which is canon, so that states it. So I can subscribe to this. If you really want to make it fit, it's, really, it's kind of hard to. I don't know how you could get around some of the things that are happening. I suppose it's possible that it could take place in the three-year warning before the androids get there, but the power levels are generally low and Goku doesn't go Super Saiyan. Now you could chalk that up to training, and that doesn't mean he has to, but I have a hard time buying that Wheelo was that strong as just a brain in a lobster robot suit. But I still have fun with this one. It's got some really funny humor within the action scenes. It's got some good fights uh, and it's wonderfully animated. And even when the DBZ movies are more average to enjoyable, they're still a ton of fun. I give Dragon Ball Z the world's strongest 3.5 out of five stars. We're gonna start getting into some better ones here soon. Remember, always look for the good.